Hey everybody, good evening. It is uh, 9.51 p.m. on um, Wednesday, February 28th, 2018. Hope everybody's doing well. And uh, I know I've been absent for a while, so um, this won't be a long video because nothing really all that exciting to talk about, really. Um, really, since the beginning of the year, the markets have, uh, I don't think it have been really too exciting. Um, you know, not to say there haven't been some moves, but, uh, uh, you know, there hasn't really been anything really that's got me jazzed up to make videos, so um, I haven't really been doing any. Not to say I haven't been trading, but uh, anyway, so just want to make a couple of, um, couple of video, a uh, couple of uh, uh, brief points here, uh, mostly around the Australian dollar. Now, uh, this evening we had the um, uh, Australian uh, private capital expenditures came out and that came out uh, quite a bit worse than expected. They were expecting um, um, about 1% uh, or you know, the Reuters poll was 0.9% with a range from uh, 0 0.5 to 2 and we came out at, at negative 0 0.2 so that's well below the minimum so that was a surprise and uh, it just really is going to add to the selling pressure that the Aussie has been under lately. Um, this is the Aussie dollar on the daily chart. We had this large move down. Now, whether you want to look at this, um, uh, you know, if you go out here to the weekly chart, I mean, this looks like just a massive correction on the weekly chart. So, um, in uh, that, you know, we'll see when we get to this trend line again what happens. But um, I think this trend line is probably the minimum expectation here. And uh, we had this move down, and whatever we want to call this move, I don't know whether this is the one. And now this was this definitely looks like a three wave move up for a, a for a, a, a two or or a B. And now we're starting a, a longer term, I believe, wave three down, uh, or maybe a wave C. But at the very least, um, you know, at the very least, this is probably an ABC. Uh, but more than likely. Um, uh, I, I would say just based on the fundamentals um, that we'll see some kind of um, one, two, three, four, five, and I think a minimum target again uh, would be this trend line. And if we get a daily close below this trend line, you know, we could really see this fall back. As you can see on the weekly chart, the Australian, the Aussie dollar has been certainly has been very weak. So, uh, although it, uh, in the uh, midterm, the you know, it's been. Uh, it's been fairly strong so um, so all the Aussie pairs have been hit um, and you can see they're, they're all down uh, you pretty much will see this across the board I think the Aussie Canadian is a good trade uh, right now because we had this move down then we had this you know fairly corrective move up sloppy choppy move and now we've uh, kind of went back test this high now coming back down so again whether this is a 1-2 this is the 12-hour chart but you go out to the daily uh, we had an impulsive move down, and we have this kind of sloppy little small candles up, and you know whatever is going to happen from here. Um, uh, this this you know these areas up here held uh, on the highs, so I think the Aussie Canadian has uh, got a long way to go to the downside. Uh, of course, the Canadian's a pretty fickle currency itself, so we'll see. Um, but anyways, uh, and if you look at the uh, Euro Aussie. I mean, this just took off tonight after this uh, news came out. And we're kind of running into some resistance here at these levels. Um, so we'll see where it goes from here. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a decent correction here, but that would be based on the uh, on the Euro and not, not the Aussie. So, uh, But the Euro has been all over the place. I mean, you see the Euro Aussie has been up, you know, but uh, the Euro dollar has been heading back down. Euro yen has been really heading down. The so you know I haven't really been too thrilled with trading a lot of these pairs. They've really just been all over the place. So um, so that that's what I've been talking about. So uh, so for anything coming up here uh, tomorrow morning, 4:30 a.m. New York time, we have GBP manufacturing PMI. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't expect that's going to really do anything. Um, again, really, as I've said many times, really what's important to the market right now is anything around Brexit. Um, you know, if you get CPI data or employment or wage data, that may have a move. But these, um, all these uh, other indicators that come out, you know, sometimes they have a temporary effect. But 
you know, really what's going on with Brexit is going to be the key, and there is something coming up with that on Friday. And then uh, tomorrow during the New York session, you have uh, Federal uh, Reserve Chairman Powell is continuing to testify in front of um, um, the Senate Banking Committee in Washington. And uh, we'll see what he says. He's been uh, pretty positive on the uh, U.S. dollar. So, you know, the dollar really has been very hard hit lately, but we've seen some recovery here. But, you know, I mean, the dollar is still down. So, I, you know, it's really the U.S. Swiss is at a key level right now. We're coming back to this high right here. And so we'll see what happens. But uh, I've really avoided, honestly, trading a lot of U.S. dollar pairs. You can see the U.S. yen is still down. Uh, the U.S. Canadian uh, is has recovered a bit. So um, but Powell, has, uh, he did testify, I believe, in front of the House Committee, and it was, um, it was pretty positive. Um, so we'll see what he says. I don't expect he's going to say anything different than he said today. Uh, ISM manufacturing PMI, that could have some effect. I mean, generally, I would say this is not going to do anything. But, you know, the market really is, is trying to hang its hat on, uh, on positive outcomes uh, in the dollar. So if we get a, a positive number here, it, it may help. They are expecting a decrease here. Um, you know, we are probably going to get a rate hike coming up in March here, but that's fully priced in, I believe. So um, I, I just, you know, the dollar is just floundering. You would think it would be up pretty strongly because, the you know, overall the fundamentals have been very positive with the data, you know, with the tax cuts that were passed in December. But it just really hasn't been able to get its footing, which is pretty interesting. So, so I did want to point out one last thing, and this is on Friday morning. There's no time set right now. It says tentative still. I'm assuming at some point they'll update this. Um, but Theresa May, who's the Prime Minister of England, is going to be speaking um, on Friday. And if you read this, she's due to speak about the post-Brexit relationship with the European Union. So this really has the potential to be very market-moving and volatile because, like I said, really what the pound is focused on is on Brexit. And so here you're going to have the Prime Minister speaking about you know what England's, uh, what probably what she foresees as England's relationship with uh with the European Union after the break this year, so so really keep an eye on this. Uh, once they set a time for this, I would uh, I would definitely keep an eye on things and uh, be very cautious if you go into this with any GBP trades open. Um, obviously, it's it's still a couple of days away. We don't know what time she's speaking. So to me, as an Elliott Wave trader, I'm not bothering looking at any charts right now. Uh, we'll see uh, maybe tomorrow night once this time is set. And I'll see, you know, what it looks like. Um, you know, uh, it, it really could be very volatile, so we'll see. And then uh, on the back of that, we have construction PMI, which, again, will be completely overridden by what Theresa May says, so I would probably ignore this. But then at 5 a.m., you have Governor Carney is speaking, and uh, he is going to speak on uh, a little bit on, uh, he's going to speak on cryptocurrencies and evolution of money. I don't anticipate this will do much. Again, I think Theresa May will will outshine him and he's not speaking Carney's not speaking on monetary policy so I don't anticipate that will do much uh, and again all eyes are going to be focused on Theresa May and then finally to round out the week we have the Canadian dollar GDP this is a very important number uh, so I would certainly look for um, uh, potential volatility on, on the Canadian dollar um, again any Canadian dollar on GDP and CPI data and employment data uh, is very volatile um, uh, GDP, uh, I mean, excuse me, Canadian dollar can be very tricky to trade. Um, it can really have a lot of wild spikes and quick reversals. So uh, I will be looking at this carefully, but again, not not right now. It's it's too far away for me to really um, focus on at the moment. So, um, but uh, you know, keep an eye out. I think there'll be some good sentiment trades coming out the rest of the week between things like uh, Fed Chair Powell speaking and Theresa May and uh, anything else that comes across the wires. Um, the other thing is to, uh, tomorrow we have core PCE index. And although, you know, this doesn't really move the market much, but uh, honestly, this is the Fed's pretty much their core piece of information is the, is the PCE. Um, you know, I don't know if it actually says that in here. Yeah, this is rumored to be the Federal Reserve's favorite inflation manner, uh, inflation measure, but CPI is released about 10 days early and tends to garner the most uh, gets the most attention, and, and that's true. Uh, you know that the, the Fed really likes this, but the market seems to like CPI data better. It's just this just is not a sexy type number. So, so although this is an important number, uh, I, you know, 
this used to be in red before X Factory downgraded it to orange, and I think that's probably um, um, probably the correct thing to do because it, you know. But again, I'd keep an eye on it because you never know, especially <clears throat> if there's a big deviation. This uh, could be potential, but other than that, I, I wouldn't worry too much about it unless this this comes out with a, a major deviation one way or another. So, but uh, so that's it for the rest of the week, guys. Uh, it's a fairly quiet week from a scheduled news um really not much really happened this week so uh, a lot of these red things are, are are not really very good so um but um there's still a couple opportunities left especially from a sentiment standpoint and that's what i'd be keeping an eye out for so all right guys so thanks a lot i hope you all have a great night and a great rest of the week and uh, feel free to share the video leave comments please like the video please uh if, if you watch it you know it really helps me out uh, instead of just bailing out on it. All right, so I appreciate it, guys. Have a good rest of the week, and we'll talk to you soon.